How's it going everybody? Thank you for watching another episode of Short Guy Drinks Whiskey. Tonight we're drinking scotch, but not just any scotch. We're going to be tasting the most sold scotch in the world. Of course, I'm talking about Johnny Walker Red and Black Label. Up until now, I really didn't have a problem with drinking whiskey out of a container that looks like this versus this. But what happens when a non-whiskey drinker like myself starts taking whiskey more seriously? Will I ever be able to tell the difference between a scotch or a bourbon, or pull out those awesome aromas that all the sommeliers can out of a Glen Cairn glass? But most importantly, out of 365 days, where will I rank the world's top whiskeys versus the lower ones? Let's find out as Short Guy drinks whiskey. All right, to begin, Johnny Walker is owned by Diageo, who's the parent company that also owns Crown Royal and Bullet Bourbon. Now, if you haven't seen those tasting reviews, I'll leave a link for it right up here. But let's get into the scotch. All right, here we go. Johnny Walker Red Label versus Black. My main concern here is, can I pull out a flavor difference between the Red Label, which is matured for three years, versus the Black Label that has a 12-year age statement on there. Now, the price difference is relatively small here. This is on the lower to mid end, so there's maybe about a $10 to $15 difference between the two. But I'm very curious, can I taste a difference? Now, when you're looking at these, there's really not that much of a color difference. And I'm pretty sure even when I get it into the glass, it's going to be the same coloring. Uh, that's because in Scotland, they can use caramel coloring. Now, that might be because these are matured in used bourbon barrels. So that color isn't as intense as, as it is in bourbon. So there's a little bit of coloring in there. So even though this is a 12 year and this is a three, you can kind of balance them out by adding color in them. Now, again, what's cool about these two is that they're very price accessible, even though that has a 12-year age statement on it. It's very affordable, and it's mostly because it's a blended scotch, meaning that the scotch used in here is blended from all over Scotland, and most of it is going to be grain whiskey, like let's say corn or wheat, and the last third, probably malted barley. And both of these are 80 proof, so it should be very smooth to drink. And I'm expecting a little bit of smokiness from Pete because they are blended from all over Scotland. Let's get these into some glasses. All right, I got the red label here on the right, black label here on the left. And I got to tell you guys, color-wise, nice honey color, but they look pretty much identical. Smell is fantastic. I can smell it just spilling over the top. All right, let's let that sit for a bit. All right, so this is the red label. Let's give it a sniff. Whew, for 80%, that really stings the nose. Kind of alcohol-y tasting, but not the same kind of alcoholic burn you would get as if it was like 150 or something like that. Different kind of stinging. Ah, from this one, I'm getting that really weird, uh, like with some scotches, I get a, like a rimmed salt glass tequila smell out of here. I'm looking for that smoke. Not a lot of smoke. Nope, not a lot of oak barrel in here. Smells kind of watery, very thin. Not a lot of sweetness, but floral. Very light, very watery. All right, let's try the black label. All right, so this is the black label. Remember, this is matured for 12 years versus the three years on the red label. Oh, that smells much nicer. No burn, no stinging. Much thicker heavier smelling. Now I get a little bit of that smokiness and definitely I can smell more of the oak barrel in here. And because of that, I think I'm getting sweeter tones like that dark caramel. Yeah. All right, let's give them a taste. All right, let's go with the red label first. Hopefully it'll be a little bit more full body than the smell. And maybe I can find some of that peat smoke in there. Mmm. There's that smoke. 
Hmm. Kind of slippery tasting in the mouth. Very watery. Man, that smoke is coming out. Wow. I'm not a big fan of peat, so whoo, super intense smoke. Not a lot of burn in it though. Contrary to when I first smelt it and that alcohol was burning my nose, it's 80% proof, so that's gone. Tingling all over the tongue. Man, that smoke is coming right through. And very watery, not a lot of body in there. It really feels like my tongue is just sliding around in there. All right, let's try the 12 year. All right, let's go after the more full bodied black label. Mm. Mm. That's a lot more fruity tasting. A lighter, lighter smoke uh, taste, not heavy, not overpowering like the red label. Definitely more bodied. Zero burn on the finish. Not as oily and slick and thin as the red label. A lot more candy flavors. This by far is a lot better. All right, so what are my conclusions between tasting the Johnny Walker red and black label? The first thing is there is a huge difference for me in the tasting profile between the red and the black, and I'd say pay the extra $15 to get the black. I think that the red label just was so heavy on the smoke and it was so light on the body that you really couldn't taste any of the other flavors that were in that whiskey. On the other hand, the 12 year is a lot more mature, a lot more full bodied, and it didn't have heavy smoke on it, so you could really enjoy the taste that were coming out of it. So my recommendation is pay the extra 10 to $15 to get the black label. Now what you could do with the red label is you can water it down by putting in a little bit of water in it drop by drop to see if you can tone down that smoke, but I feel that the black is the better tasting whiskey of the two. Guys, that's the ending of the video. Hope you enjoyed it. If you liked it, please give it the thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to Kimo365, please do. Remember, I'll catch you guys later.